All right, so today I'm going to be checking out a couple problems that I have, or a problem. Hopefully it's not more than one. But uh, I changed the fuel pump in my 93 Wrangler. Uh, I got fuel pressure at the rail where I wasn't getting fuel pressure before, but it still wouldn't start. <clears throat> so I started looking around and, you know, and I just start, tried to start it again to show you. So you'll see right there, fuel dripping. So it's coming from the injector. So the seal is bad <clears throat> at the injector. So my hypothesis is, is that the fuel is getting to the rail, but it's losing pressure and it won't start because of that. I'm not 100% sure. So what I did, I purchased the fuel injector seal kit. Comes with uh, O-rings and little, um, mesh filters. So what I'm gonna do is pull, I'm gonna pull the fuel rail off. Here's my fuel lines going in and out, the vacuum. I'm gonna pull the fuel rail and I'm gonna replace all the O-rings and all the inject injectors. So before I do that though, to release some of the pressures, I did open up the rear fuel cap. I'm gonna take out this is the fuel relay so you can see fuel pump or sorry fuel pump so i'm going to take that out uh, and then start the car and it'll starve the uh, engine for fuel to hopefully get some of that fuel out of the fuel rail and then when i take it apart it won't be a huge mess so uh let's get started all right <clears throat> to, re to remove the fuel rail what you need to do is, so here's the throttle, or the throttle, part of the throttle, I guess, right here. See how it's, if you can tell, if you can see it. Oh, there it is. It's a U-shape. So this is hooked on to this right here. And I'll, I'll, you heard it snap. All it did was push it, it came off. And then this one right here is on, take a little screwdriver, or as I would take my hand actually and pop it off of, let's see if we can see, yeah, right on that ball. So it rides on the ball, you pop it off, and then that's your throttle. There's four plugs over here that come off. One, there's two, there, there's one right there, there's one. Right there. So all of these come off. Pop them off. So all four come. Just tuck them away. And that helps give helps give access to the so the fuel rail can come off. And then there's 10 millimeter bolts here. There's a double bolt here, so it holds on this loom and this wire comes off. And there's another nut underneath. And that not bolts, right? That's a bolt. And then right there's one. And behind the tissue, there's one right there as well. These have to come off. You take a tool that goes in here, under here, and separates it, allows this thing to pop right off. Uh, and then there's the 10 millimeter here. And there's a 10 millimeter right down there. And that allows for sorry, this thing to come up and then you can pull the fuel rail. And once you do that, the, uh, you have to take these off as well. The injector, the power for the injector or the electrical for the injectors, then the, everything will come off and I'll put it on the workbench and we'll take it apart and take a look at it. I'm also wondering if the fuel pressure regulator is any good. Um, it might be bad. So I'm going to not rule that out, but we'll see what happens. Fuel rail is out. So injectors, O-ring, I'm going to replace all of those. And then there's that little basket I'm gonna change as well. And then these are clipped on. 
you just take a screw, a flathead screwdriver and pop them off. A little bit of force and these will come out. And then there's another O-ring up top in here. And this is the fuel pressure regulator that is original. So again, keep my eye on that because that might be an issue. But there's the six of them sitting there. Here's the without fuel rail in it. I put down a claw or a blue rag, blue towel, capture the fuel I used. This tool to remove them. So this what happens is it clamps around the metal that fits inside here, which allows you to separate this plastic piece, which clips over this bump. So what's happening is there's a piece of plastic on the other side. And these lift up enough so it'll go so it'll clear uh, this this nipple knob whatever you want to call it and slide right off so also be prepared when you take it out there's a lot of fuel in this fuel rail so it's gonna piss out fuel if you're not careful or actually it's gonna do it whether you're careful or not but you just want to be prepared I told you how easy it comes off. So here, screwdriver fits in under here, so one hand. Pry it up a little bit, and it comes right off. And then in here, this seems to be the problem child. Comes right out. Ah, look at that. O-ring is no good. It is shot. Matter of fact, that could be the problem because when I did empty out the fuel rail, so little bits of rubber come out. So this could clog the whole line. So I'll be doing some extra cleaning. And then actually, I was wrong. I think that's the. I think that's the basket that uh, that I can replace. In there it looks pretty dirty. It's hard to tell, but all right. Just thought I'd show you that, and I'm going to pop all of these off, then put them back on and put it together. I didn't find any more debris from this one just completely being shattered, which is why it was leaking. So, <clears throat> I did replace them all. You can see you got the new, new O-rings on the bottom. I did not replace these little baskets. Um, I've, I've replaced these injectors before. And I don't think that I can replace them without damaging the injector. So I just went ahead and forgot about it. Um, but I tried to clean them out a little bit as best as I could. And then with the fuel rail, uh, I put some air through it to make sure that any of the any debris from this um, was go ahead was was out and it came out pretty clean. One tip, a couple different things for you. One is Vaseline. I use Vaseline around the o-rings the heat it will make it um, dissipate it won't be an issue but it just helps it get on and then it helps it seat inside so when you're pushing these in you have to wait for a pop and then you'll know it's seated and then when you put these clips on you notice how they're round that goes around the injector but then there's a little slot that little slot goes around this edge so when you put it on you can see, it'll focus, right? The edge went in that slot, and that's what helps to keep the injector on. I've done this in the past where I didn't make it on that slot, and while the injector stayed in place, uh, it just wasn't good for it in case something happened. So again, just a little note, uh, when you're putting those clips back on to make sure that it snaps in place. The last we left off, I was replacing all the O-rings in the fuel injectors and getting that put back together. I did that and the Jeep still wouldn't start. So then what um, I kept reading about things that may or may not be wrong. And since this is a 93 and it's got 200 and some thousand miles on it, 
<clears throat> I replaced some parts that maybe didn't need to be replaced, but I figured as old as the Jeep is, it's not going to be that big of a deal. So I'm going to go through and tell you what I did and, and why I did it and what the results were um, at the end. So the fuel pressure sensor, I replaced that. Um, that didn't fix the problem. It still wouldn't start, but it's brand new and ready to go. And I see that I've got it cracked. Probably need to replace that uh, as well. It's cracked, so I'll get on that, but it's not critical right now. Anyway, from there, um, it still wouldn't crank. And so um, I decided to go ahead and check the distributor cap and the rotor. I did that, replaced that. It still wouldn't start. Um, at this point, I was kind of at a loss as to what in the heck was going on. And so I finally, I bought a spark plug uh, or a spark tool to see if I'm getting a spark. And I checked uh, the first, uh, first plug, no spark. Second, no spark. Third, no spark. All right, now I got, now I know what the issue is. I can't find a spark. So I tested from the coil to the ignition <clears throat> unit or the ignition coil to the to the center and there was a slight spark there so I was getting spark there but I wasn't getting spark to the plug wires so then I kept reading and reading and I thought well the map sensor which is right there that's a potential problem and so I was like you know what that's brand it's that's old I'll replace that I replaced that nothing happened new plug or uh, actually then what I, I started reading more and more and I decided that it was probably the ignition coil because when the ignition coil goes at times it can destroy the plug wires which would make sense that there's no spark going to the plug any of the plugs uh, because that sent a signal and destroyed the plug wires um, so what I did is I bought a new one of these uh, and be careful the plug right there uh, it could be um, a blade or it could be um, a push uh, push in or, or, a, or a, a cylindrical mine was oval that's what I meant oval or or blades I bought the first one I bought was blades and then this one was oval which is the right one I replaced that I replaced the plugs I replaced the plug wires the distributor, the rotor, or the distributor cap, the rotor, the map sensor. I uh, also replaced the crank uh, sensor, crank position sensor. Uh, that plugs in over here. That plugs in right there. You can follow that, it goes down kind of see where it goes down onto the uh, back of the, the engine there. So I replaced that. Um, then once I replaced the ignition coil, uh, she started right up and things were good to go. So with that being said, I know there's a hundred things that could go wrong with somebody's Jeep. But to recap, uh, here's, here's what happened. The Jeep was idling. It stopped running, fuel pressure was bad. So I changed the fuel pump, it still didn't start. Noticed a leak, changed the O-rings, still didn't start. The battery was dead, so I got a new battery as well. Um, and then I went and I replaced the plugs, the wires, I replaced all that stuff. Some of it again, probably didn't need to be replaced. Um, but because of the age of the vehicle, it didn't bother me to replace this stuff. And I know that people say, don't throw parts at it. I'm good with throwing some parts at it, especially ones I know I've never changed before uh, because it's gonna just last me now. And I did finally come to realize that it was the ignition coil that was the culprit. This bad boy right there, you can see it, it was, uh, that was the problem. So hopefully somebody learned something uh, through this, but it was a frustrating process to go through for sure. I'd never 
have my Jeep puzzle me as much as it did with this particular issue. So if you have any questions, go ahead and ask and I'll answer as best as I can. Thanks.